There is a little fat black bear in the in the grass. He tucked in behind the grass. I should wrestle him. I'd bite him right apart. I'd wear his skull on my head and I'd, I'd wiggle my head to make his jaw still move. Hey, how are you doing today? <laughs> hey, Pooh Bear. It, I don't know what the heck, but it would, uh, yeah. I, I'd like to have his paws for gloves. <laughs> like Wolverine. <laughs> I'm gonna show you guys something that uh, is probably gonna blow your minds. And I'm just gonna tell you right now, uh, the fallacy of fall tillage, the, the, the theory behind fall tillage is for a quicker warm up in the spring. And because you have less snow pack, you know, the residue is down, so you don't have less snow pack and you fix all that compaction. Uh, I'm gonna tell you right now, everything about that is false. Uh, we're warming up quicker in this field than the till field across the road. And you guys tell me, um, I'm gonna show you a couple things and you guys tell me what what you think. Uh, first of all, we're gonna show the, the tile probe here. Um, I got the tile probe and I'm just gonna <clears throat> push it down. And I'm just gonna go here and push it down. Oop, I'm out of camera there. Uh, am I, I'm back in the camera here. I kind of went off a of camera. Do you, <clears throat> do you see the rock? <clears throat> rock. <clears throat> rock. That's hilarious. Um, do you see a, a common, that might be a chunk of frost. <clears throat> do you see anything? I can do that all day. <clears throat> I'm really curious, a, that is a rock. That kabanged when you hit it. Yeah, there was a rock there because right there. Call me a liar. <clears throat> but look at my feet as I walk around out here. <clears throat> what do you think of that? You already got worms moving around. Good drainage. All the excess water, not all of it's gone, but it's it's really cleaning up big time. Come with me. Here's the chisel plowed field. This is where I was not too many years ago, right across from that field. Now, how well do you think you're getting out here with equipment when you can just do that? <clears throat> Frost. 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 You want me to keep going? Frost. Let's haul manure on this field. Right there's frost. I can feel it with my foot. God, I live to do the mow board. Oh, I'd come out here and mow board right now if I... Oh, it'd be so tempting. So tempting. I gotta stop talking about it because it's starting to starting to rear its ugly head in my thoughts of how, how nice that mow board would be. It, this stuff would roll over so beautiful under that mow board it wouldn't even know what to do. They did everything right. They had the deep shank to shatter compaction and they had the discs up front to bury all that residue to make it black. So you tell me why do they still have frost and that field's a complete muck mess? In this field there's no compaction, there's no frost. I could plow tomorrow, I could plow today, I could fertilize today, I could haul manure today. Uh, what You saw my boot sink in that field, what, what are you going to do today in that field? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And so when I say fall tillage is a complete farce, it's because it's true. That's where I was. That is the soil that was this field some years ago. If I went out here when I first went to this field, <clears throat> if I would have came into the first time I come into corn stalks 
you lowered that planter, you tried to be out here early, and it was nothing but a disaster. The wheels on the planter just drug because that corn residue is so greasy and slimy and just muck underneath that the planter wheel sunk in, stopped turning, and just drug corn residue. The front, wheel drive, the front wheels on the 4640, since it's two-wheel drive, one wheel would sink in and then it would just slide and just blow a hole or a blow a rut right through the soil because we had dirt back then we didn't have soil and uh, or if it's a dry spring you'd come out here and it would just be concrete it'd just be absolute concrete and you'd have so much down pressure we used to i used to do it as on the old 7000 deer the first couple times i tried no-till and this the one of the springs was dry and I had so much, I had the down pressure springs cranked up so high that when the, as the liquid fertilizer emptied in the tank, the toolbar would start to ride higher and then the row units would start to come out of the ground. So I always had to maintain a half a tank in the fertilizer. No more. No more. I actually fixed compaction. Fixed it. it it's no longer an issue. We fixed compaction. We fixed drainage. I used to think, how can I get to the point someday to afford tile to chase all around this field? But really, how much time, how much money did you and energy did you spend last fall staring out a windshield, turning your field black, only to have what everybody tells you doesn't work be in a lot better condition? Wouldn't you have rather tucked your kids in, had dinner with the wife, went out on a date, took that money. What if you just took that money and paid on a bill on the farm instead of instead of buying more wear parts for the disc ripper? Uh, that's a serious question. It, 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 if you were 21, would you rather stare out a windshield, turn in a field black, or being at the bar chasing girls? I've reduced my herbicide program quite a bit in corn. I've reduced my fertility expenses massively over a number of years. And the yields are still doing nice. They're still getting better. It, it, everything about this field is getting better. For, yeah, I, I don't know what more to say. I, I, I don't think, I shouldn't have said a dang word after showing that. I should have just dropped the camera and just been like, Puh, see ya suckers. It, uh... Yeah, I don't know.